This is our introduction to portrait photography. So we are going to talk all about portrait photography here today. And now I want to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Aaliyah and I am actually a teacher by trade so it's pretty fitting that you've come here to listen to my tutorial today. I have been a photographer for eight years. I'm experienced in portrait, macro, and night photography, as well as a little bit of Photoshop and paint shop, and really anything. I just try and dabble in photography. My work has been featured online in Portugal for an environmental cause, environment, environmental awareness. It was actually about graffiti was the picture, and also in Rome, which was kind of an odd self-portrait that I did that I overlayered some interesting kind of chrome looking bubbles and that was for a water theme. Anyway, so if you come across those, don't be surprised, but I want to thank you so much for coming here and taking the course with me today. Now, what you'll learn in this course is the following. We just did our introduction to portrait photography. We're going to talk about what makes the portrait look great. We're going to talk about recommended equipment for a better portrait shot, compositional techniques for cool portraits, tips for better backgrounds in portraits, lighting skills for amazing portraits, bokeh, blur, and other special effects, examples of poses for better portraits, and continuing, we'll talk about tips for child portraits, tips for corporate portraits and headshots, tips for wedding and event portraits, indoor portraits and tips for outdoor portraits because where you take the portraits and when you take the portraits changes a lot about the compositional effect that you'll want. Alright, so what is portrait photography? Essentially, it's taking pictures of and capturing the essence of a person or group. So here is a picture that I have personally taken. This is Adam and I really feel like I captured his friendly personality in this photo that I use the sepia effect. All right, and so let's get started with our chapters. Makes the portrait look great? Well, I'm so glad you came to lecture two to ask. There's not really one set answer though. There's the personality of who you're capturing, the uniqueness of the composition of the photo. There's good lighting. Maybe you want some props in there. There's the angle that it's taken at, that is, in the pose. So I'm going to talk about those a little bit right now in lecture two, and we're going to go even more in depth in the next few lectures. So compositionally, use the rule of thirds. And basically what that means is that you take the main focus of whoever you're taking the picture of or the object that the person is wearing, say it's a hat, whatever is the best part of the picture. Right now, I think, in this picture, for example, this is a picture of my puppy, Presto, and she has the cutest eyes. And so, if you look up and down, her eyes are about a third of the way down the photo. And if you watched my macro photography tutorial, I believe it's up already, then you'll know that I talked about that in depth. You'll know all about the rule of thirds in the Fibonacci sequence. We're not going to go as in depth in this portrait pho photography tutorial, but I will say if you want to know more about the rule of thirds and strategically placing objects in photos or where to place people, then definitely watch that creative online school tutorial as well. So here's another thing. Find that unique element, and it can be silly. Bring out their personality and make them comfortable with you before you start. So I think that's the most important thing, especially if you're doing, say, like corporate headshots and everybody is all in a business setting, they're serious, and maybe they're strangers and you don't know them. You don't want them to feel like you're a stranger because then they won't be able to show you their real personality. Maybe they'll feel awkward. So just ask them first, you know, how their day is going, what they're interested in, maybe meet and have a coffee with them first and you wouldn't think that it would be related to, to photography and good photos but it really makes the world of difference. I'm speaking from experience here. 
Okay, so by the way, this is my friend. I took it in high school. And uh, this picture, and there's a green bean on her lip. That's what it is. We had a basket full of green beans. If you listen to my macro photography tutorial, you know that I'm a gardener. And so she picked up the green bean, put it on her lip. Now, compositionally, it's not a great photo. The top of her head is cut off. Don't do that. That's a do not do on the list of portrait photography. And it's what it's called backlit, which means that there's way too much sunlight in the background. So funny picture, not a great picture. Wouldn't recommend it. Okay, moving on. Here's a couple other do not do's. Do not have the person too much in shadow unless it's strategic, which we'll talk about later. But Adam here is definitely entirely in shadow. His face is not very well lit, neither is his sweatshirt, but the background is. So I wanted to show you this one because look at how I capture the essence of him because I know him really well, so it's easy for him to bring out his silly, goofy, happy personality. But like I said, the lighting is too low, so it's kind of an interesting dichotomy here. I would recommend if you end up with this, you know, edit it post and make it lighter, which I will do soon, or get an external flash, which we'll talk about more in another lecture in this tutorial. So no matter the pose, make sure that the person in the photograph looks relaxed. So even if they're kind of hunched over, if they look relaxed, then you're golden. Recommended equipment for a better portrait shot. All right, here we're going into the more technical part of portrait photography. Here's actually a self-portrait I did of myself in high school when I took my first photography class. I really do enjoy this picture. I took it in the window of our house, and here you can see I have my Canon Rebel, actually the same camera that I'm still using for portrait photography today. But that was an interesting reflection one. I do use Canon as far as my camera goes, but we're going to talk about some other things besides cameras as well that are going to help you get a better portrait shot. Must-haves. I would say the only thing you must, capital M-U-S-T, have is a DSLR camera. Now, you might be thinking, what is a DSLR camera? I'm just getting into portraits. You know, maybe you just have a, you know, a new cousin or a wedding that's coming up and you dabble, but you don't really know. Okay, so a DSLR camera is a digital camera with a single lens reflex. Now that sounds really fancy, it's kind of fancy, but it's nothing to break a sweat over. Basically what it means is that it is less compact than what we call a point and shoot camera. Now an example of a good point and shoot camera would be like a Nikon Coolpix, which doesn't have as many manual options as a DSLR camera. So it's more quality, more high quality, and you're really going to want to have this DSLR camera if you're going to commit to portrait photography. All right. You could also use, I might add, not just a digital camera, but a more older style film camera, for example, like a Minolta, they take beautiful portrait photos and it allows for a lot more bokeh, a lot more blur in the background. Those are lovely, but if you're just getting started, you know, doing the film and especially if you develop the film on your own, it's a lot. You know, we would need at least three or four tutorials all to get that into, you know, squared up. So I'd say definitely DSLR camera, nix the point and shoot if you're going to get into this. All right, other equipment includes the external flash, especially for inside or studio portraits. It just kind of evens out the lighting for the entire photo. Also a tripod, one of those things with the three, you know, I'm sure you've seen them, it has three legs to it. And if your hands are kind of unsteady, it helps with camera shake. Telephoto lenses, are better lenses for that background blur and a lot of people like the background blur in portrait photos. They're quite a bit more pricey, but they are worth it if, like I said, if you're going to commit 
and for inside, just a basic backdrop, to be honest. I know a lot of, if you think about college students these days, I almost said kids, but I just got out of college, would be kind of like a tapestry or something textured that you could take photos of inside if you don't actually have a studio. If you do have a studio, then you don't need to t me to tell you about this. All right, so here's an example. This is a really nice backdrop for an inside photo. See how it kind of complements her hair. It has a little bit of texture, but it doesn't take away from the light blue or from like her hair and skin tone. So this is a really lovely example. Another example is finding props that complement the setting. So you have the orange brick building in the background that perfectly matches with the hat. All right, and we'll talk even more about things like this in the next lectures. Thanks for coming to lecture three.